the anatomy of tympanic membrane or tympanic membrane is also called as the eardrum in layman's language tympanic membrane is a very important membrane which separates the external ear from the middle ear so it is an oval thin semi transparent pearly gray trilaminar membrane trilaminar because it has three layers so that's why it is called as trilaminar membrane which separates the tympanic cavity that is the cavity of the middle ear from the external acoustic meatus that is the external ear to be very simple uh, the tympanic membrane separates the external ear from the middle ear the diameter at the maximum summit is almost 9 to 10 mm and the minimum is 8 to 9 mm the position uh, it is not vertically placed or horizontally placed but it is placed obliquely at an acute angle of 55 degree with the floor and it is facing downwards forwards as well as laterally okay in case of children uh, the tympanic membrane is much more horizontal compared to the adults and the advantage is they can withstand even loud noisy sound uh the uh, the second thing is because of this angulation of 55 degree the anterior wall and the floor in case of adult are much more longer compared to the posterior wall and the uh, roof the subdivisions uh the there is something called as uh, the malleolar fold which divides the tympanic membrane into two parts we'll see. so if you see here this is the malleolar fold so this is the posterior malleolar fold and here is the anterior malleolar fold okay so this is the anterior malleolar fold this is the posterior malleolar fold this divides the whole of the tympanic membrane into a top part this is called as the pars flaccida and this part so sorry this part will be called as the pars tensa this whole part remaining part uh, is called as pars tensa this pars flaccida and tensa is because the pars flaccida is uh, as you can see here it is lax and loose and pars tensa it is tense it is tight so that's why depending on their uh, intensity they have been called as pars flaccida and tensa pars flaccida as you can see it is small triangular as well as lax okay in this picture you can see it is small uh, as well as triangular and lax but pars tensa is taught by the handle of the malleolus and radiating fibers if you can see here so this is much more tense because of, because of the this is the handle of the malleolus okay which will be pulling and this will make tense this whole part of the uh, uh, tympanic membrane that's what is called as the pars tensa and there are uh, as we have mentioned uh, there are radiating fibers if you can see here these are the radiating fibers okay which will make it uh, much more tenser coming to the surface of the membrane uh, as i said it is trilaminar in nature it has an outer and inner surfaces and there is uh, in between there is a layer okay uh, the inner surface is concave convex sorry the inner surface is convex and gives attachment to the handle of the malleolus what you are seeing here is the the uh, the seen from outside and here you can see it from inside i will show you the picture where it is shown okay so here you can see here this is the uh, the picture shown from inside and here you can see the uh, the uh, the malleolus itself as well as the handle of the malleolus the, the incus and stapes so here you can see this uh, uh, fibers which are uh, radiating here towards the handle okay the inner surface is convex if you can see here so this is the inner surface it is convex okay as well as uh, 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 the convex and gives attachment to the handle of the malleus as you can see it gives attachment to the uh, handle of the malleus itself okay uh, which extends up to its center yeah so it will this handle will not go down or it, it is not short but it is up to the middle of this uh, tympanic membrane it comes up up, uh, up to the the center of this uh, tympanic membrane uh, with maximum convexity called uh, umbo so the lowermost part will be uh, curled and that will be called as the uh, umbo 
so here you can see uh, this part is called uh, the the ambo the, the handle of the malleus this is also seen from in the, uh, from the uh, 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 the handle can be seen and here this part the most bent part this will be called as uh, the the ambo okay so the surface it has an outer and inner surface the inner surface is convex gives attachment to the handle of the malleus which extends up to its center with maximum convexity called as ambo okay the structure of the membrane as uh, again uh, as i repeated before uh, it is trilaminar so it has three layers the outer cuticular layer the intermediate fibrous layer and the innermost mucosal layer so the outer layer will be called as cuticular because it is uh, the skin which is covering the uh, uh, the the outer layer of the tympanic membrane but it is hairless but it is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium the lining epithelium over the the outer layer of the tympanic membrane will be keratinized stratified squamous epithelium but it is hairless okay as you know the keratinized uh, they will be hairless okay the second layer will be the intermediate fibrous layer in between we have the fibrous layer uh, it will be having uh, radiations as we have already seen the outer radiating as well as inner circular fibers will be there in past fascida it is replaced by loose connective tissue that's why there is no fibrous layer in the past flaccida as you have seen the top flaccida means the upper part okay here uh, in this picture is not very clear uh, in this yeah here you can see this is the past flaccida it is lax and loose because there is no fibrous layer but it is uh, just the uh, the uh, connected tissue layer which is present there so that's why it will be uh, much more loose and lax but where there is fibrous layer that will be tense okay in the uh, past tensor okay uh, coming to the innermost layer which is uh, towards the the middle layer uh, that will be the inner mucosal layer because it will be covered by mucous membrane lined by simple ciliated or columnar uh, or sometimes even the squamous epithelium okay it is simple ciliated columnar or sometimes even the squamous epithelium that is the mucosal inner layer so there are three layers of the uh, tympanic membrane outer cuticular layer intermediate fibrous layer and the innermost or the inner layer that is called as the mucosal layer coming to small spaces which are around this tympanic membrane there are three recesses or spaces this is called as anterior recess posterior recess as well as the uh, pus uh, pus recess so this these three layers of recesses are there recesses mean small spaces which are present around the tympanic membrane okay and this cannot be seen with the, these pictures but they are present okay coming to the the uh, the blood supply or the arterial supply it is by the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery which supplies the the outer layer that is the cuticular layer uh, the stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular as well as the anterior tympanic branch of the maxillary artery supply the mucosal layer and the fibrous layer as you know it doesn't need blood supply uh, uh, it's a directly okay so the there are two bl uh, uh, blood supplies the outer layer for the outer and inner layer the outer layer will be supplied by deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery and the uh, mucosal layer will be supplied by the stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular as well as the anterior tympanic branch of the maxillary arteries okay coming to the venous drainage it is uh, uh, to a plexus uh, which uh, will be finally drained into the pterygoid venous plexus through the external jugular vein as well as the inner uh, layer into the transverse sinus and pterygoid venous plexus okay okay so uh, the partly it will be draining outside and partly it drains into the uh, the uh, the uh, cavity of the skull itself okay so the transverse sinus as well as the tegod venous uh, uh, sinus and plexus will be deep inside the the cavity of the skull okay uh, and the outer layer will be drained into the external jugular vein okay coming to the nerve supply the cuticular layer will be supplied by the auricular temporal branch okay upper and anterior part and the, uh, the auricular branch of the vagus to the lower and posterior part 
So auricular temporal nerve will be supplying the upper and anterior part of the tympanic membrane, the cuticular layer outside. Okay. And the auricular branch of the vagus, uh, vagus nerve will be supplying the lower and the posterior part. And the mucous uh, part will be supplied by the glossopharyngeal uh, nerve through its tympanic plexus. So here you can see here, this is the, the tympanic nerve and this is the tympanic plexus. Okay. So this tympanic nerve is coming from the, the glossopharyngeal nerve and which will be supplying the, the mucosal layer. So it forms a plexus called as the tympanic plexus and that will supply the mucosal layer. But from outside it will be the auricular temporal nerve as well as the auricular branch of the vagus. Okay. Coming to the development, uh, the tympanic membrane develops from all the three embry embryonic layers. As you uh, we saw, it has three layers. So all these three layers develop from three different uh, embryonic layers. The cuticular layer will be developing from the ectoderm. Uh, the intermediate fibrous part will be developing from the mesoderm. And the inner mucosal layer will be developing from the endoderm. So all the three ecto Hmm. The ectoderm, mesoderm as well as the endoderm come in contact at the in the tympanic membrane. The cuticular layer from the ectoderm of the dorsal end of the first brachial cleft, the intermediate from the uh, intermediate layer that is the fibrous layer from the mesoderm of the adjoining brachial arteries, uh, sorry brachial arches, sorry uh, mesoderm of the adjoining brachial arches and the inner mucosal layer from the endoderm of the tubo tympanic recess. So all these three are from uh, the tympanic membrane. Here this is the uh, uh, otic pit uh, which is forming uh, the, the external acoustic matters and here will be the development of the tympanic membrane. Okay. Coming to the applied anatomy, meringotomy. Okay, this is the procedure done whenever uh, 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 the, uh, the tympanic membrane has to be uh, uh, has to be cut uh, to drain uh, any kind of fluid which is within the middle ear. If there is any uh, pus or infection, uh, the like the otitis media, uh, then uh, uh, then you have to put a cut on this tympanic membrane. That is called as the meringotomy. Okay. But lubringotomy, when you are doing it, you should be very careful and it is usually done on the posterior inferior part of the, uh, the tympanic membrane, the posterior as well as inferior part. Why? To avoid injury to the corda tympanic nerve which is passing behind the pass flaccida and the ossicles near here. So here will be the flaccida and here will be the corda tympanic nerve which will be passing. So to avoid injury to this corda tympanic nerve, the surgery is done usually in the posterior inferior part, lower part. Okay. Uh, here you can see here. So this is the, the facial nerve running all the way and beside that a nerve coming from the facial nerve. This is called a corda tympanic nerve and uh, here it is much more clear. So here you can see this is the corda tympanic nerve running all the way. Here above will be the pass flaccida and this is the pass tensor and in between this is running and between the, the ossicles. So this is called as the, the corda tympanic nerve. So if you do any surgery above then it might lead to injury to this corda tympanic. So the surgeries are usually done in the posterior and inferior part. Okay. So this is about the meringotomy. Then the second thing is when you are examining the uh, the tympanic membrane, as I said, uh, uh, the ear has to be pulled upwards, backwards, as well as laterally. And if you put a torch, it will give a cone of light. When light falls on the tympanic membrane, the concavity of the membrane produces a cone of light. So if you can see here, there is a cone of light over the anterior inferior quadrant. So this is usually, this part will be flash while the light, not the whole part, but this part will be flashed with a light, this is called as the cone of light, okay, because of the, the convexity itself, you can see a flash of light, this will be called as the, the cone of light, okay, in this region. Now coming to the, the middle ear, 